take it away because we did the hard we went through most of this and now yes. it's your turn yes you did there's <laughs> only four or five things that we need to get back to uh, well let's do a little bit of calendar work all right i'll get my calendar all right calendar <coughs> ready okay so wednesday the third at 6 p.m is the tri board Okay. I'll be happy to post for you. October. October. October 3rd. Does that work for everybody? Nope. I'm okay with it. Okay. So that means good news is you don't have to nail down everything tonight. Okay. We can finish everything up on the 3rd, but we need to sign the warrant on the 3rd. So. Okay. So the, and that's going to be a 6 p.m. 6 p.m. So if we absolutely, if we can't finish it tonight, we can have one more chance to Right, or if you want to take some, uh, something under advisement, you have a week to do so. Yeah, it just won't be posted in here. Okay. Okay. Um, October 11th at 7 p.m. over at Hopkins Academy is the public forum on the, on the special town meeting warrant. 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. Hopkins Academy. You don't have to be there. This is an opportunity for us just to get the news out to the, uh, mm -hmm. the, to the audience, just the facts. What's it called? It's called the Public Forum on the Special Town Meeting. And we have a slideshow. We just present information. We don't take votes. We don't advocate for or against anything. Just it's information all And this is a good opportunity for us to hear the questions from the audience so that when we have the the real show on October 18th at 7 p.m. at Hopkins Academy. We're prepared. Okay. This is one week ahead at 7 o'clock, you said? 7 o'clock, October 18th. Special time meeting. Mm -hmm. Does that work? Yeah. I'm sorry, you said one week after that? Exactly yeah. one week after that? Exactly one week. The 18th? The 18th. At 7 p.m. is the town meeting. It is the town meeting. And then just for fun, because we can't get enough of this stuff, the uh, Association of Town Finance Committees is holding their annual meeting at Devon's at Saturday, November 3rd. committees and grumble about the how mean and ornery the town administrator is. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you say what that's called again? The uh, Association of Town Finance Committees, ATFC. Where's Devons? How far away is that? About an hour and a quarter from here. Did you say seven? Uh, That's an all-day thing. Probably. It's an all-day thing. I actually don't have the agenda, just the announcement. Yeah, mm -hmm. Doesn't say. Oh. You'd have to look it up. left on the warrant that you have recommendations that are pending. Just walk right through it. The first one will be the budget.
two big items are the budget and the second big item is the uh, capital plan. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, what's your preference, just walk through them in order? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So at the annual time meeting, May 3rd, we passed the balanced budget uh, with a certain level of services that we had, that we had planned for. This is the enhanced uh, fire department and the enhanced ambulance and all the other things that we, uh, we did. After that occurred, the state finalized their state budget and the, finance and the state aid dropped for us, so technically our assessment for the school choice increased by $70,000. This is something we had not planned for. Um, so, this budget takes into account the following. First of all, it preserves <laughs> my budget book. This? Yeah, here it is. Right. Well, with all the tabs in it. <laughs> okay, so it preserves all the services that we committed ourselves to at the annual town meeting. We're keeping the ambulance, we're keeping mm -hmm. the fire department, we're providing for the other upgrades that we talked about, we provided for the OPEN. Um, the state aid was reduced, or technically our assessment was increased by $70,000, which created an imbalance in the budget. This is partly offset by our new growth, which increased by $40,000 above what our planning numbers were. Uh, collective bargaining agreements are now included in this budget. They had not been settled by the end of time meeting, so the financial impact of the collective bargaining agreements for police for dispatch and for DPW are included in this budget. Uh, Two percent COLA with no step is factored in for the non-union employees and that's in line with my own contractual increase. Education, we had agreed that we would reserve $57,000 for education at the uh, special time meeting and he dropped their request down to $25,000, so that's in here. At the annual town meeting, we committed to using stabilization to fund half of our OPEB obligation, and given the constraints of this budget, I increased that to 100% uh, of our obligation for OPEB is now funded by stabilization. In effect, you're going to be transferring from one stabilization account to another, so it's the same kind of money. Uh, this is something that Linda and I consulted about, and we can come back and talk a little bit about that. Local receipts, I kept them at the annual town meeting levels with small increases in room occupancy and meals taxes amounting to less than $13,000, and now with the new free cash number, I'll probably bump those up by another 2800 And there's plenty of room to spare there, but I don't want to go talk a lot about local receipts because that's our engine for free cash. And I know I'm talking a lot of inside baseball, so stop me, and stop me when you want to be happy to explain. Thank you. Obligatory expenses that became known after the annual town meeting, such as property insurance and workers' compensation, are provided for, so both of those went up um, after the town meeting, so the numbers that we used for planning for property insurance, professional liability insurance, workers' compensation, uh, those went up, we have to, we have to pay for that. Um, wherever possible, I went back through the budget and trimmed in order to take into account better information so, for example, the uh, overlay account, I was able to reduce that by $5,000. The North Hadley Village Hall, since we're trying to sell the property, I reduced its maintenance budget because somebody else is heading after a little while. How much? Um, I'd have to take a look into, okay. the, into the here, but just sprinkled around, you'll see that every now and then I was able to <coughs> save a few thousand dollars by by using best information after that was available after the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So the budget is balanced. It, um, it uh, 
for its services. Uh, it continues our strategy with OPEB. Uh, and happy to answer any questions. There's a lot of details, so I hope you've had a chance to look through it. If we go to Seven pages in, you'll see a summary. There you go. <laughs> so, in the general fund, our total revenues are seventeen and a half million dollars. Our expenses are eighteen point two. 18.3 million dollars, leaving an imbalance of 732,590. Uh, we transferred 69,042 dollars from free cash for one-time expenses that are contained within the budget. Um, and the next page shows you what those were, the outline of what those are. That consists mainly of uh, the reserve fund, which you all control at $50,000, mm -hmm. and an unfunded liability within the pension of $19,000 for a former employee. Free cash for to balance the budget is $396,000. Then our OPEB contribution out of stabilization of $263,000. This is in line with our strategy of knocking that OPEB obligation down. And then there's some residual revenues that are transferred in to achieve a balance of zero at that, um, in that first box. In the uh, enterprise funds, we have revenues coming in at $2 million and change. And our expenses come in at two million five fifty one thousand, creating a deficit of forty thousand dollars, and the forty thousand dollars is achieved by the reserve transfers to cover the small reserve accounts within each enterprise fund. And again, you all control that money. Those reserves; these are like little mini reserves within the enterprise fund, mm -hmm. so that. Should they need that money, you don't have to go to the general fund in order to uh, cover an unforeseen and unexpected mm -hmm. expense. So the achieved balance in the enterprise funds. These numbers will have to be tweaked slightly in order to take into account this new information about the free cash certification, which we just received this afternoon. What, so what is the MSBA debt fund reserves? What is that? This was an overpayment of $25,000 from the Massachusetts School Building Authority that was given to the school when they did their roof under the MSBA program. And under the rules of the Department of Revenue, we have to pay that back over a 10-year period. Oh, so that's on there every year? That's on there for the next 10 years. I think we're winding down now. It was a ten, it was a ten, okay. So it was for the roof? Roof. For the school. Roof. We have to pay it back. We have to apply it to the deck. So, okay. I was looking. I saw. The, I, I see it now. The three. I was looking at the free cash that we're using, three ninety six. But then I saw the two hundred. But now I see. Yeah. That was the estimate. Okay. So if we uh, go to the article one of the warrant. Quickly. 
122, the select board other salaries, that's for uh, Jennifer and Janice downstairs, that's the 2%. Mm -hmm. The accountant salary is uh, DD across the hall, that's 2%. The assessors is Dan and uh, Janice at 2%. The treasurer is Linda and John at 2%. The tax collector is uh, Jessica and her staff at 2%. The town clerk, the same uh, 2% increases for them. 171 Conservation Commission, this is a jump of $12,000. That's because the revolving fund is not keeping pace with the expenses of, uh, of making sure that uh, people are complying with the environmental regulations that are under the purview of the Conservation Commission. So we're going to take a look at that, but right now we need to inject with some cash into that situation. Okay. Okay. Planning board, the other salaries, we have somebody working five hours a week for them, so that's 2% there. Property insurance, we estimated 106500 at the annual town meeting. The bill came in at 124 A lot of that is driven by the upgrades of the sewer uh, property, of the seven uh, pump stations that we upgraded and the clarifier that we upgraded. Town buildings, okay, senior center, a small re reduction there is able to uh, look at the historical expenses of uh, that they might estimate that the uh, that the uh, thirty five thousand three fifty was a little rich and so I trimmed that budget by a thousand or so dollars. Town hall um, looked like we needed a little bit more in there. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall again we're gonna sell it so I cut that way back. Mm -hmm. Police salaries, this is almost entirely contractual based upon impact bargaining uh, with the collective bargaining units there. I have a question to yep. go back to North Hadley Hall. Yep. Wasn't this, weren't we budgeting in there like a $5,000 to build out for the fire truck at one point? Is that why that was higher? Let's take a look. I just thought that, that we were going to build it out as a temporary, but now that we have plans to actually build the substation, we're not going to need that. But we have an older vehicle there that we're putting money into right now because I think that's what's happening. So what did I do? I cut back the oil and I cut back the telephone. Okay. I, for some reason, I thought we had cut it way back prior to that. But I thought we had. Yeah, and maybe that um, the budget 490 is where it is. you'll see that uh, money. 490 is the building maintenance budget. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, you think the, that's where the 5,000 is that we were planning on? Well, let's take a look at that. Building maintenance. Oh, I got no time to go to I got three thousand dollars in there. So that's where it is. It's in the budget for four ninety, and it's at three thousand dollars. Yeah. What are we going to do with that? Are we going to do it or not going to do it? We'll find out on the third when the select board review the uh, commercial real estate broker uh, response that they received. Let's see what they want to do. Okay. Um, they, they seem committed to selling the property. It's EXT for exterior, so that yep. is EXT maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, 220 fire. Okay, again, the first line is the 2%. The second line is additional expenses associated with the new staff, so that's air packs, mm -hmm. physicals, that kind of, that kind of incidental cost. Okay, 222 is, uh, Union contract. 
241 building inspector, that is 2%, <coughs> and then his staff. Uh, 242, 243 are uh, gas and plumbing inspector, 2%. School department, 300, that's that $25,000 increase, not the 57. Um, I have a question about 222. That seems like it went up a lot. Yes, it did. That's just a contractual thing. Yeah, part of the negotiations, part of the bargaining. Communications. Uh, in, in, in who is that for? In exchange, in exchange uh, they got we got concessions about sick leave, so that we can control that. Sorry. Who is the communications? That's the dispatchers. Uh, Dispatch. Those are the people you're talking to when you yep. have an emergency. Um, 911, there they are. Okay. All right, I think we were at uh, highway construction. Uh, yeah. Okay, so again, contractual increases plus 2% for the non union people. And again, some small increases for the expenses boots and shoes and t shirts and things. Uh, sewer salaries and water salaries, these are within the enterprise fund, okay. So again, contractual increases for the salaries and incidental expenses for, uh, for the contractual obligations. Building maintenance, this is, this is uh, neutral, but it's a correction of a, uh, of a Correction of a problem that we didn't uh, see at the annual town meeting. We actually have somebody being paid out of the building maintenance account now that we have a unified DPW with various divisions. We have a maintenance person in there, and we can't we can't pay people out of an expense account. We have to break that into salaries and expenses for withholding purposes and tax compliance purposes. So there's no net change in the amount of money there, but we have separated out the, the salaries versus the expenses. Oh, I see, because I went lower than, okay. Yeah. So that's, that should be zero increase there. Okay. Council on aging salaries, this is an increase uh, to uh, non-union people there. Hadley media salaries the same, library salaries the same, park, Commission. This is for the park director, and she's not getting this uh, two percent. And, and just to go back on council on aging, is that just the two percent? That's a little bit more than two percent. It's uh, moving somebody from one grade to another because of uh, this uh, classification. So it's a correction of a of a, of a position that should have been in one grade versus a lower grade. Is is that for our director? Yep. Is this what she presented before when she was trying to uh, looking at increasing her salary um, in the beginning? It, it was, and it was something that she's talked to the select board about. And they, they, they approved it? They haven't approved it. They're going to talk about it on Wednesday. Okay. And how about her hours? Because she wanted to lower her hours at the same time. In no, the salary, the hours are the same. All right, 710, 750, this is debt and interest, and we're just moving money around from interest to principal, so there's no net change in the uh, total amount of uh, those, that adjustment, but that will pay down more principal, which will save us money in the long run. And then finally, workers' compensation, the bill came in higher than what we had expected. Library salaries, is that just the 2%? Yep. Okay. Well, I guess, how would you like us to handle this? I mean, I, I would think it would be fine. I would have a question, you know, 
and questioning the the, um, the increase on the council on aging, but that's up to the the select board on how they want to handle mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I, I all we're you know we don't really have a say on to what they want to do. So, well, I, I think I could call that um, they were trying to address an injustice about pay level between her and another department as well. Yeah, the library director. Yeah. So the, didn't that happen? the library director with their their co equal positions the library director was bumped up on grade, so we really need to bump up right. the director of right. the senior center. Okay. Did we do I mean it just I, I didn't necessarily know if, if we've played even throughout the whole board, you know, of, of looking at everybody's um, pay in, in their levels and, mm -hmm. and do an analysis on who needs what. I mean, mm -hmm. can she really just compare to one? I mean, if you're comparing to non-essentials, I mean, do we want to go and look at the park and rec at the same time? I mean, I, I just feel like, oh, you, this person is getting just this, so I need an increase. I just don't know if that's a smart I, I just because they have it doesn't mean necessarily there's not other compensating factors and how about other people I just feel like this might not be the right time and, and I, I would think there would be should be more thought put into it than just to give her the increase um, I, I so I necessarily I, I, I understood what she would they were asking for before but I don't necessarily know if it's been you know, looked at strongly enough, put together people to look at, and it's not just one one group. So, but it's up to the select board how they want to handle it and what kind of, you know, um, information they want to get or research or how they want to handle it. But I think you're gonna, if you're just playing one one person at a time because one person is a little bit of a squeaky wheel, you're gonna have other people start being come squeaky wheels, and right. I think we're gonna have a bigger problem, and, and it's gonna cost us a lot more money down the road. I don't know. I think you need to do a fair analysis of the whole. The yeah, whole so, so that was part of the capital plan. Sadly, that was one of the things that we had to cut in order to make the other things happen. So, we did. We cut. As far as this in the capital plan, I remember just their van. We cut them. The council on aging had a van. Yeah, so the vans, the vans provided for. Yeah, but she, we cut her in the beginning. We didn't. We didn't cut her. We had put down some money for a compensation classification plan, and the money simply wasn't there for that. So. So we pay we pay people's salaries out of the capital plan. No, 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 no. It was for a project for the review of the, com just as you said, the comprehensive review of the classification and compensation oh. plan. Oh, I see. Sort of like a town-wide study. A town-wide study. And that didn't, that didn't make it through the capital planning process. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Yeah, so okay. I thought you were so taking we, one individual. So we, <laughs> so we tried. Okay. So we tried. Yeah. I mean, well, there are some things that didn't make it through that we're still looking at That is a, that is something that... And, and did the committee meet yet? The, the committee that was formed um, that was supposed to go over looking at the different departments that Molly had set up? I know that. I don't think they have. You don't think they have yet. I think that it, it's, it, was, it started, but I don't, I mean, the, the, the thought has started and we set up a committee, but I. I can follow up with Molly on that. I think that's where that would end up going. I, I, so what, what about this here budget? Uh, do you want to take another week to look at all, all of the information? Do you want to make a recommendation tonight? What do you want to do? Do you need to go ahead? No, I don't, I don't need any time. Um, no, I don't need, I guess I don't need any more time as far as um, going through all these numbers because I, I believe that you've looked at, I mean, a lot of these numbers. So are we looking at this right now for the vote? Is that what you're looking at? Yep. But that's, you know, these, 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 two these documents work are, together. Yeah, yeah. They work together. 
Well, I mean, I didn't go through and add the numbers. I mean, as far as most of it is just salary. Okay, well, you're telling me it's 2%, 2%, 2%. Well, we got to give everybody the, you know, play fair. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the non-union people should get just like the union people should have something to pull. I believe yeah. that the, we did talk about the planning board um, moving. So I, I see where you moved people around a little bit. Yeah. I'm fine with that. The insurance, you know, it's a, it is, the bill is what it is. Yeah. So if it increases, what can you do? Um, the building right here, have we really used much of a lot of this right now? When you, like how much, just curious, have you done much work on the senior center? Have you used much of the building? On the maintenance thousand? of the town building? Yeah. Well, the, yeah. the, the, the 192 and the 198 uh, uh, budgets, those are operational budgets. So that's electricity, oil, telephone, okay. water, sewer. Oh, okay. I was thinking yeah. it was maintenance. Town, yes. you're the maintenance on the building. So maintenance Sorry. is in 490. That's the 490. Okay. That's, that, and that's not, that's just moving a salary around. That's yeah. not maintenance. We could get year to dates for, for the first quarter of the year right. if you wanted to see how many of these budgets we're doing. Well, I was thinking, you know, when I talked to Marlo once, it made it sound like we didn't have, I was thinking we might not have uh, spent a lot of money year to date on some of our buildings. And maybe there was some money there when we were looking at some of the, when I was looking at capital planning at the one point <coughs> at the time, I was thinking, oh, well, we can move money there. But well, I've been I've been steadily increasing this budget year after year by a factor of about twenty thousand dollars. The building maintenance. The building maintenance budget. So this one's going up by eighteen thousand dollars in FY nineteen. Mm -hmm. So every year I throw in additional money. Some years we don't spend that money. And uh, it just goes we, back. Yeah. But we should. No, I think that we should have a building maintenance. The thing is, if, if we don't use it, it just gets thrown back to free cash, yeah. right? Yeah. But it almost seems like we should almost have a reserve for building maintenance. Because we really, you know, we have to paint the town hall. We have to do a lot of these things and we don't have the money for the maintenance. I agree. So I, I, I see where you're going, but I mean, as far as I don't, do we have, I'm just curious what kind of big projects we have going on right now. Big projects. I mean, for the building maintenance. Well, that's summarized in the building maintenance. Yeah. Um, part of that's summarized in the capital plan. Uh, I would have to talk to Gary and get a summary of what he's working on. But what I'm saying is, you're increasing it, yeah. right, by uh, some money, but yet we're not. Are we using it? A lot? Some years we're not. Mm -hmm. All right. Some years we're returning money back. Mm -hmm. So. Some years we use it. Why increase it? Do you feel that the general overall trend is up? Yeah. So uh, this budget started out with about sixty-eight thousand a couple of years back, uh, and now we're mm -hmm. up to one hundred forty-five thousand. So every year I try to add uh, you know, sizable money to this account because the buildings really do need more maintenance than we've been able to do. Uh, that being said, we've done an awful lot. We've uh, fixed a lot of the HVAC problems over at the public safety complex. Put on one, two, three, four, five roofs. Uh, we've done a number of other projects that are kind of, uh, uh, bigger projects. Bigger projects with that last a long time. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we should try not to raise it this year. I shouldn't say anything. My first Those meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Those, those kinds of yeah. projects that you're thinking of are generally come down to capital capital articles and rather than competing with other operational budgets they're competing with other capital needs yeah. and then, um, so they're not coming out of the, the regular operation mm, no. no no what you're the, the town buildings there that's where custodial services oil electricity alarm system telephone and custodial supplies that's yeah. not work. yeah that's not part that's of that's not the regular 
building painting. Maintenance. Maintenance. Yeah, it's yeah. not outside maintenance of the building. Nothing's being painted. And when you're saying you're adding to it, David, you're talking to the 490. To the 490. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 490. Right. So why do we limit ourselves to, to and, and does it limit us when we separate them all? If you want to put in. Oh, it does say exterior maintenance. On the, on, when you separate them, town hall for maintenance, town hall, senior center for building maintenance, why do, you, why do we not just have one account for building maintenance so if one needs it, they could go to it? Why do we, I mean, because what happens if one. It's a good idea. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm open to that. In the past finance committees and select boards have not been open to that, but we can explore that. We just have one general maintenance budget and we can go to any building. And use yeah, because right now what will happen if you need to, if you have, you know, you need to switch it. You have to, you have to come in front of us and have us do a transfer. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to keep the maintenance going because mm -hmm. our buildings are really suffering. Yep. <laughs> and then, it, it, but I almost wish we could have some type of a reserve for that, right. the, the start putting away for that, mm -hmm. um, because we, we need to start saving for these, to do something with this room <laughs> or the, or, or, you know, next door. So David, you're saying the, the 490, all these exterior maintenance are actually some projects, or is that? These are. Those are not capital projects. These are not capital projects. So uh, regular routine maintenance, that is only the twenty-five thousand dollar threshold. Uh, so painting, uh, repairs, plumbing, incidental electrical work, that kind of stuff. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand is your twenty-five thousand is your threshold for capital. Um, if it's under twenty-five thousand, does it have to go out to bid? Uh, depends. Um, depends on what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. So, typically, ten thousand dollars is your threshold for public works projects. So if you wanted to do a sidewalk in front of the town hall or something like that, that would be a $10,000 threshold. And for public construction, I want to say the 25000 is your threshold for that. Okay. So vertical 25, horizontal 10. I don't make, I don't make up the rules. <laughs> and a lot of this is done internally too because there's salaries there. Yeah. There's salaries? Oh, well. Wow. Just the one that we moved, yeah. Yeah. But it is up here in salaries. Oh, it's because now. you changed it. Because you changed it. So, um, I am, I have no questions. I mean, especially since the school department went lower, that's great. I think that's a good thing. So the school department went lower, just let me understand, is that because of the chapter 70? No, no, it's not related to that. Um, let me pull out their, their correspondence with me. In that chapter 70 that you, we talked about, right? That yeah. we we're getting more money on? No, they're not getting more money. They're not getting the hit. <clears throat> they're getting the hit. Yeah. So, sorry. And they're saying it looks like the school department costs more. David, I know the town was prepared to restore the school department budget to its original FY19 request and has included an article on the fall town meeting 
for 53,000 for the schools. There have been a number of changes in the budget, including new students arriving, and some expenses are projected to be less than we had originally anticipated, specifically out of district tuitions. In order to restore our budget to levels the school department needs, 25,000, not 53,000. Then it goes on on some other issues, and that's from the superintendent. So when they get the new kids, that where when does that money come in? Isn't that through the chapter seventy? Well that would come in to the extent that it affects the chapter seventy formula, that money will come in next year. Next year. All right. So how is it if okay? It, if it comes in as um, school choice and you get the money follows the child. Okay. And that's where we're gonna see it in that. Right. So, okay. so, th so this money for this budget, she's saying she got new kids. How does it affect this budget? Sounds like she's got more in the way of school choice money coming in, although she doesn't say that here. But mainly the out of district tuition doesn't look like it's going to be as high as they expected. So the law is, is that if you have a student who um, so they're going to Smith College or I mean Smith um, vocational Turnus rather or some other place oh so it'd be a distant out of the, I think I've got this right it's transportation and tuition out of district so they go out of the district what that because? would also include Smith now that I think about it so they go Smith, out of district because of for something for vocational or something right something that we don't offer in our it's not the school choice it's not like they're just going to Amherst they're going to something that we don't offer right okay so when I was in Deerfield this happened to us frequently that uh, a student would enroll in uh, the tech school up in yeah. Turner's yeah and they would decide to get into an agricultural program which Turner's does not provide. So we would have to transport the student down to Smith Road uh, and pay for the transportation costs and the tuition costs. Uh, so and that's mm -hmm. the law. That's what you have to so do because every, every student deserves an education. They have a right to it. Does, it in, does this um, out of district also in, uh, have to do with the special needs kids? Depends on the student. Could. But she's saying the costs have gone down. Right. Not as many kids are leaving as, as she anticipated. Exactly. Okay. So it's nice, nice to work collaboratively if you know, don't need the money and you're willing to you offer it back to the community. I say thank you. Mm -hmm. So how is she going to take the um, the money for the, the adjustment that we talked about with the Chapter 70? That adjustment, how is she going to handle that? That, I think, is a conversation that they haven't had yet because they, they lost 70000 in Chapter 70 for their set-aside, but we also got assessed on the municipal side by 70000 for school choice sending. So school choice receiving went down by 70. School choice sending went up by 70. Oh. They get less money in, we have to pay the bill. Oh, school choice sending. We so pay. because, be, because, we pay. because they get, right, because if it's coming in, it goes right to them. Other to them. Yep. And if it goes out, it goes, we have to. Yep. I, uh, that, that's always it's something. Just, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's the way it's the law the is. is written. There's nothing, nothing we can do. So they got the increase. They got the. No, they didn't get the increase. No. They lost. They, lo they lost the Both increase. Sides and lost. we got the increase. Because you said it's a wash. It's not a wash. It's a loss on both sides. They got oh. seventy thousand dollars less in revenue. Okay. And we got assessed an additional seventy thousand dollars that we had not planned on. Okay. In expenses. Okay. You got. Got all that.
Byzantine in its complexity. So um, I think you sounded like you were ready to move along. Sure. So I, I I think I'm ready to move along. The only thing I wanted to make a note on is that I, just because we I we move along here does not mean I am in favor of the um, of the number council on aging the number five. I don't know how to address that. I think it's a conversation with the select board. Okay. Is there a motion? You want to make a motion? To, yeah? Yeah, I, I make the motion to vote on it. Okay. I'm to, and do you have a second? Second? Yeah, I have a second. Okay. <laughs> so all in favor? So a lot of work. I know it's a lot of details. Byzantine and its complexity. Oh, David, the funding. Um, so I know OPEP is not changed here because it, the funding is going to be the same as it was before, but right. it needs to go down we need a, as a funding source, and it's not there right now. Yeah, we need to populate this, and I'm working on it. It's yeah, but the line is not even there. I don't oh, think for oh, stabilization. Oh, okay, you'll fix on that. I'll okay. Fix that, but, uh, All let right. Me make a, let me make a note. So. All right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Other post-employment benefits, which are the, um, which is paying mostly for health insurance for employees that are um, retired. So we continue to pay those benefits even when they're not here. And so that's that's something that we have to account for. And it used, to, it's become a bigger issue as it becomes. <laughs> over the years and without planning ahead, which most towns were not doing, you, you just pay it as part of your operational budget each year. But it was getting ahead of um, all towns to the point where um, they needed to actually, uh, we needed to be opening up um, separate trust fund accounts basically and putting that money away so that, um, so that as the needs arise for using those funds, they're not crowding out the other operational budgets, which was something doomed to happen, destined to happen over the next yeah. decades. But nonetheless, um, by putting it away at this level each year, we're saving off that that um, problem for Hadley. We, we hope. This is not something we've come up with. This is a statewide issue, and uh, the OPEP That's health insurance costs uh, for us. Yes. Mainly, uh, you know, there's Mainly. a couple of other, couple of other things yeah. sprinkled in there. OPEB is death by constriction. You know, if you ignore it, then mm. more and more of your budget goes to uh, uh, current costs for uh, retiree health insurance, and it starves everything else eventually. So we, uh, our OPEB uh, unfunded liability is north of seven million dollars. We have about a million plus. Oh, we'll be over a million at the end of this year. Yeah, so we're, yeah. we're doing the right thing, putting stead, steadily contributing to our OPEP trust so that we can you know, eventually meet that seven million. So we're growing it. Yeah. yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> so we're constantly growing it. Do you ever take out of it? We I mean, yet, and we don't, we could if we, we could, but this that's would defeat the point of this. But, um, that is the point. Eventually, we will take out out of it to fund that portion of the budget. But in the meantime, we have to put the money in there to do it. Um, so um, that's the only purpose you can take it out is for those those uh, retired employee benefits. Right. You can't take it out for any other reason, unlike stabilization, which you can take out for a variety of reasons. But this is a single dedicated trust account, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know set up under authority of the state. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, but right now, they're com it's coming out of our operational budget. Is the retirement right now? Yes, right now, our um, that line of the budget, which is for benefits, is is for current employees and for our retirement employees. Mm -hmm. So uh, that line is paying double duty right now. So we're taking care of that out of the budget and then putting away. So what we're putting away each year is exclusively for that time that we need to draw back down on it. And we're hoping, you know, that we'll be ready for that when the time comes. Yeah. So, 
so that that can then supplement our operational budget because as you see that line item it keeps growing each year at a more rapid rate than um, departmental budgets or, or our other normal operational budgets increase we, and they would eventually they would crowd out our other budgets it's just growing so much so so if you had to guess how much did has it in, so from last year to this year how much of an increase did we have in percentage on page 23 of your, of your well, there, you, there, there you have it. <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue. Not, yeah. not in the one that I gave out tonight, oh. but if you look at if you look at the uh, old book, the old book, page 23. Right now, but it is there. We, mm -hmm. we said that we're at 11 percent funding of the total unfunded liability, which is very healthy. Uh, place for a small town to be. Yeah, but I was wondering. Sure. I know what you're asking for the, insur the health insurance. Okay, so yeah. in, in 2016, in insurance, we paid out 1,000, uh, 1,082,000. The next year, it was 100,000 more than that. And the next year, uh, it was almost 100,000 more than that. Right. So this, yeah, this year. Um, so this year we're not going up that much because remember we changed the uh, benefits that we're offering. We yeah, cut well out we added the more employees. Too. We added more employees, but we still came out ahead. So this year is one point uh, one point two million dollars, and last year actual was one point one four. So it just about it's about a hundred thousand more than it was. So last every year. year it's increasing maybe by, by a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and every year we're trying to put away two hundred and fifty thousand. Yes, this year it's almost 270. We're doing an increase by the two and a half percent. So yes, the so actual we're we're doing in, we're way ahead because uh, it sounds we're, like we're, we're doing really well. We're coming out ahead each year a little mm -hmm. bit, but yeah. we're coming out more by more than just what we're putting in each year yeah. because that money is invested well because it's a long term investment. So we're also getting the income off of it each That's year true. from it each year and. Um, because we do have a plan and we're, we're looking very healthy in that area, our, act, our assessment as to uh, where we are and, and what interest rate they apply to our, uh, uh, to how they're able to project what our future needs is, that's coming down too. So they, they're saying each year that we need less than, than we did before. So this is one reason why even though the two extra 268000 was not available to be paid for out of cash um, this year as last year although last year we were able to recover from it and pay it out of cash this year um, if we don't have the cash I do advise it comes out of stabilization fund because that is a better use of the same money now I know we're not crazy about taking it out of stabilization either but dollar for dollar is an investment and the way it uh, the way we then are able to take advantage of that going forward and the way it looks on our balance sheets, we are better off with that extra 250000 instead of sitting in stabilization as an investment, move it over to OPEB. So, I mean, we can't keep mm -hmm. doing that. No, because, that, because we're not adding towards stabilization. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ex except by its own investment income, which right. maybe it's a little bit more than it was, but um, yeah. it's not all that much. But so it's not a long-term plan. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh. Doesn't having OPEB so well funded, doesn't that have a big impact on our borrowing costs? Like, isn't that one of the reasons why we have such a great rating? It's, um, uh, yes. Uh, we have a double A plus rating from Standard & Poor, which is very good, very healthy. Um, one of the things that rating agencies look for is whether you're taking your OPEB obligation seriously and we're able to report very positive and very strong progress on OPEP liability even though they keep on changing the actuarial rules it's a moving target so it makes it very much a moving target objectively we can take a look at what that what our uh, obligation is and how much have we contributed to that, to that and map that out and, and adjust it for inflation and show that we're continuing to make solid progress on our overall obligation. Yeah, I can't remember how many years or 20 years it's supposed to take us to get to. Theoretically 20, like 20 years. years. It'll take us 20 years to get to that sweet spot where we are uh, taking in and paying out uh, 
handling the obligations without it coming out of the budget without having to put more money in. There are some towns that are way ahead of Hadley, so Arlington is for the cheap 100% funding of their mm -hmm. open obligation. Concord expects to achieve 100% in the next eight years. Um, but as a small town in the western part of the state, we're doing so much better than our neighbors. Uh, and uh, it's something we can be proud of. And we'll pay big dividends for future generations. All right, so moving on. Mine is still young. <laughs> Page three of the warrant. That's this document here. Article three of the trust. This is going to be easy. I recommend that we don't do anything on this because we don't have any information. We don't have the trust, right? It's not good. No, don't have the trust. We haven't seen how much money is going to be transferred. Uh, I don't think. I, this may be ready for October, but we may defer this to the annual time meeting. So okay. I think no recommendation at this point should be your recommendation until we have better information. Okay. Moving on to... Do we need to vote on that? No. Page 5, Article 6, Capital Stabilization. This is free cash left over from the budget that we're going to transfer into capital stabilization in order to fund just the itty bitty part of our capital plan. With the certification of the free cash and a slightly lower amount, I'll make some adjustments within the budget in order to preserve that $7,003. So just to just to quickly, so I just have a just a, a brief thing out of the four sixty nine that we have. Yeah. Seven. This is seven thousand is going to the capital. Yeah. And then three hundred and sixty nine dollars is 7, going. Three hundred sixty nine thousand is going to but to for our budget. Right. The math, we'll see that you're about $2,800 in the hole. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment to local receipts, principally meals tax and motel tax, in order to make up the difference. But we have a lot of room. To okay. Go So the, the, per, the, the principle here is that we're going to have a little pile of free cash left over from the budget process. We want to make this free cash productive and we're going to put it into the capital stabilization account. And then the next article will fund the capital uh, plan. The reason why we want to transfer it from capital, from free cash to capital stabilization is to provide a layer of protection on that money. Free cash is a simple majority vote, whereas capital stabilization would be a two-thirds majority vote. So mm. I know it's a I'm small just disappointed yeah. that it's so so such a small amount. Yeah. I'm just so surprised that it was that we needed so much of it to balance. Yep. And it, it, a lot of it had to do with Chapter 70. I and guess. Yep. Like, uh, ambulance. Ambulance union contract negotiations. Just quick, uh, did you did you know the figure that is the difference between that would the total figure in in this right here the the difference? What's the difference? Uh, yeah. Uh, I have to calculate. Yeah, that. it's okay. I can <laughs> you sometimes know those numbers off of your head. It's <laughs> a test. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how do you feel about? Uh, Seven grand at the uh, at the capital plan. We're good at that. I think it's very good. Uh, as much as we can. We it need was, it. We need it. I wish it was higher. <laughs> We're going to spend it. What we can right away. Do. All we can do. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we um, transfer from free cash into capital plan. Okay. I'm going to do that next. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Aye
Okay. Capital plan itself, same page, Article 7. We have assessor software for $8,000. We have uh, mapping catch basins and manholes for $20,000. I have a garage repair for ten thousand dollars. Hmm. Sewer Is line. that over here? Yeah, so you're I'm just gonna run through the article. Here. I just thought it was sixteen thousand dollars. It'll be fifteen. You, you're okay. going to redirect another article? Is that a different motion? Uh, a different yeah, just uh, Okay, yeah. Let me just the run, total you run through it. Okay. Just yeah. run through and then we'll have a fuller discussion okay. based upon this piece of paper over here. I have a garage repair for 10 grand. It's actually 15. That's actually 15. I have to make that. Yeah. But it'll be it'll show up in the warrant as 10 grand, and I'll explain why. Right. Sewer line for 30,000. This is to do an annual assessment of the sewer lines. Water tank and access and clearing. This is a must do for 25,000. Callahan well. Number one, reconditioning, again, a must-do for 25. Hadley media expenses for relocating out of this Hooker School, 15,000. The HVAC attic venting and dampers, again, this is a must-do for 27,000. 63 is actually 35,000. I'll explain how we get there. Town Hall staff vehicle, 10,000, we're going to borrow. Cruiser, 47,000 and borrow. Skid unit for the fire department. This is a piece of equipment that gets loaded into a, into a uh, fire response vehicle. <coughs> 31,000. This is a planned replacement of the Ford 550 dump truck. 85,000. <coughs> Hopkins Academy equipment, cafeteria equipment replacement for 5,400. And then security and health upgrades for both schools for 98,000. And then the van replacement for $80,000. Some of these are paid for out of cash. Some of these pay are paid for out of borrowing. And this may be the best time to go over to this piece of paper. This. And when you say the borrowing over oh. here, is that including the debt exclusion? Yeah. Yeah. Because I have. Thank you. Yeah. What exactly do you mean by borrowing? Like, is it from a different fund that the town has, yeah, or the town goes out to, <coughs> out to borrow from um, goes out to bid for borrowing, like you know, taking a loan out as we oh. would take out a loan okay. for cars and all. But we would um, we get rather than take a loan out for each particular item here, we add them together and go out and do a note and, and we do that every get back year? with interest. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I miss, where, do, how do we, so the payments for past borrowing, where? They're on uh, budget 700. So, um, you know, it is on, it is on your, it is in the warrant, David, because you corrected the figures there. 710 and 750 long-term debt principal and uh, long-term debt interest. I see. So we pay about $1.3 million right now a year in debt and interest. Out of the general fund. Hmm? Out of the general fund, we have other debt and That's true. That's right. Just out of the general fund as opposed to the uh, water and sewer enterprise funds. Yes, thank you. Correct. So every year, about how much does that go up? But like for borrowing more this year, will it go up another hundred thousand dollars a year? It'll probably go up more than that because we will. Um, we have past approved borrowings that we haven't gone out for yet, such as oh. the senior center building and the library. We have some pretty large projects that are out there. So we vote to borrow something, but um, and we get the authorization for borrowing. So um, we probably have. We have about eight million dollars out now, and we have fourteen million authorized that we can go out for. But these are some large buildings that we have. So. And maybe it's really a good time to just to say that um, we're looking maybe possibly increasing, right? Increasing right. the right. Um, so if we spend what one point three million towards that, 
maybe we want to increase that so that way we can have more if we pay down more we'll have more room for borrowing because we're going to we have all these capital items that are coming up that we're going to have trouble paying for right. so we can borrow more right yeah without we'll going borrow, up to debt exclusion. We borrow the same, yeah, yes, so we can, yes, yeah. correct, I misunderstood, yes, but yes. so we can, so we can pay for more of our items out of borrowing. Yeah, right. there's, there's a distinction to be made between whether, I mean, I don't want people to think that we're going to borrow more so that we can pay for, um, so it's gonna raise their taxes, such as no. under, under the debt exclusion, so is that something you wanna go into right now? Because, yeah. um, yes? Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Just to give you some parameters, uh, Town this size, we recommended that we have that debt service between six percent of debt revenues and ten percent. So there's that sweet spot of no more than ten percent, no less than six percent. Over ten percent, you're paying too much. Under six percent, you're not keeping pace. I see. And we're at around six percent, so we have room to drift mm -hmm. up a little bit. Whether we have a political appetite. Do so is another mm -hmm. matter, but in terms well, it sounds like it's going to happen if it's already been authorized. Yeah. Um, we the principal has been authorized, but what we're already borrowed, um, what we're already authorized for now with the large buildings, when we borrow, it actually is not going to increase the taxes at that time because we already calculated um, what that borrowing would cost, and we increased the debt and interest lines and started paying it about. Well, at least one, maybe two years ahead, even we increase the payments. Mm -hmm. So we're paying the amount that we would for those buildings, even though we haven't gone out to borrow for them yet. We're using that money and paying off some other debts, which is also good. So what, what the idea was that the select board wanted to keep, and, and we all work together to keep the payments even over time. Mm -hmm. So it's as if we took out, a, took out a fixed mortgage on a house that we haven't quite built yet. I see. So yeah. that's already there. But as from now on, and every new item that's on here, and you can see we have several borrowing items, this is all then above that line. This is going to be over and above. So there was an understanding as to what our, our taxes were going to be increased by in order to meet a certain debt and interest payment each year, which is what that one point, um, actually about 1.2 million, 1.1 million of it, I think, is uh, debt exclusion. Um, if we go out and pay for it over uh, out of an override, um, it's a debt exclusion override, which means that in order to pay for that item, we're going to raise people's taxes to meet those payments, and uh, and that's fine. That's how we pay for buildings because you'll never fit it into the opera operational budget. But there's another kind of borrowing, which is it's called within the levy, which it means it's actually part of the operational budget, and we're just going to pay that. We're going to borrow. We're going to pay it out, back out of the budget but we're not going to uh, it's not going to go out subject to an override all right so we're going to pay for that within what we've got so what we talked about um, on, at our capital meeting on Monday night was increasing the debt and interest payment line by a, about a hundred thousand we can't do it this year's budget but increasing that amount so that we can use uh, we can be doing more of that borrowing than the levy and buying um, using it to pay for dump truck cruiser these units at this whole last section that you see on page six, uh, those kinds of things we can put in and just do regular borrowing, which I with rather supposed to asking, do you want to pass an override for a cruiser? Do you want to pass an override for a truck? Um, we need to control more of those smaller borrowings. It doesn't feel small, but compared to buildings, they're small within, hopefully within the operational budget. So it's something we're trying, to, um, you know, looking ahead, I think that we can get to over the next few years if we have a little bit of a boost in it, the finance committee thinks that's a good idea. Because as you see, every time we increase the budget, as everything's a good idea, you know, the ambulance, let's fund OPEB out of stabilization. At some point, you know, we are really kind of running out of money in the budget. And what we're looking for, if we're going to continue this pattern of trying to buy more within the levy, that really means hiking that line item as we would an operational budget another fifty or hundred thousand dollars over the next few years maybe build up to so that that amount which is now one hundred sixty thousand out of our budget making that closer to two hundred sixty to three hundred thousand and then we're really making a good dent um, 
in that level of borrowing. So the benefit would be that we'd have a more sustainable uh, funding source for our capital plan and we wouldn't have to uh, be waiting around for free cash as much as we have done in the past. So we wouldn't be in a situation of saying, well, we only have $7,000 to transfer to capital stabilization. You would have capacity within your budget to go for some of these, other, these things that, uh, that otherwise we pay for by cash. And the other advantage is when it passes a town meeting, then you're done. You're not passing in a town meeting and then going out having a special election and throwing all these items on. Yeah. And then maybe they'll maybe they'll fail, or maybe those people who are voting on it don't understand what happened at town meeting. And um, it, it really is a good idea to you know get up and give a simple explanation about why we're getting another cruiser or another why we need a bus at this time. And those are the people making the decision. Um, so politically, at, at, at that level, it makes a lot of a lot of sense too, depending on depending on the size. And, and what do you what would you say how much is do we have out there what is how much have we for what? Um, borrowed for what is within the levy yeah um, and that's well we, we make 160,000 pay in payments right now yeah um, but what do we have that includes balance? okay oh it's balance it's a uh, they're all here but I'll have to add them up mm -hmm. oh. Well, let's see. We were very close to being paid down on, on our 25000 for the public safety room renovation. We had 25000 for an OPEM, but that's going to be uh, not OPEM, OPM. That's going to be paid off uh, next year. We bought the land for 405000 and that's going to take several years to pay off at the rate of $160,000. Uh -huh. uh, so that's four hundred you, five. You can count that as completely in there. So for, for 405 plus the 21 on the other side is 425. And the school HVAC was 175, uh, 170,000, which we haven't begun making payments on yet either. So let's see, four, five, seventy-five. That's about 600,000. Then we have some lingering items from uh, bonds from 2009 and 2014, which uh, looks like maybe we have 100,000 left on, 150,000 left on those. So, and they're, they're dwindling down. Um, I'm almost disregarding those actually because they're in the bond and they're just getting paid back, uh, paid gradually. You know, they're not going to be. I, I just forget, someone asked me once and I couldn't, I just yeah. didn't have the number. And okay. How much money are, is out there that we're borrowing right now? And I couldn't, I didn't know. Oh, that's just all within the levy. But then, I, you want, a debt, want me to get you a debt uh, sheet that shows all of that information? Yeah, yeah. maybe for that to me at some point. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, we file at the end of each year, as of the end of the fiscal year, we file with the state um, a statement of all of our debt that's outstanding, what category it's in, and how much is unauthorized and still unborrowed. Okay. And it's a pretty clear sheet, too, as far as state forms go. Mm -hmm. So one of the easier ones to understand, I think. Okay, good. Well, I'll be ready next time. <laughs> All right, so let's walk through the capital plan. This was recommended by the capital planning committee. And when you compare this sheet with this article, you can see some changes, some differences in the numbers. And, and this is driven by what are we planning to spend? And what do we have to go to the voters to ask them to spend? And so what we plan to spend, we have authority to spend more here than we do here because we've either gotten a voter's approval in the past or that it's coming from a source of funds such as grants that are something that we can access, access uh, without the uh, town meeting approval. So the first thing is the IT upgrades for 63500 and that's uh, also linked with the body and crews or cameras for 15000 both of those are, uh, we applied for a grant. That grant is still pending. The amount of the grant is $119,000 and change. So we don't need to go to the town meeting in October for that. The town hall vehicle for $10,000, we're going to borrow that for uh, within the levies. So that means we don't need to go out for the, the ballot vote afterwards, so it's just as soon as the voters approve it, 
Gavel Falls, we're ready to go. Cruiser, 47,000, same thing, borrow within the levy, and that's what the L stands for. Body and cruiser cameras, again, that's covered by a grant. Evidence locker unit for $12,000, this is something we really should do, but I think we've got money already approved for maintenance at the public safety complex that we can spend that money to cover that expense. And I'll, I'll work with you to double check that that's true. Okay. Yeah. I have a okay. list. Fire department skid unit, 31000 Again, we're going to borrow that within the levy. Ford 550 dump truck for $85,000. We're going to borrow that. That's going to be a debt exclusion, so that requires a ballot vote 90 days after the town meeting has concluded. And that's what the DE stands for, debt exclusion. And one of the questions that they'll ask, and I don't know if you've calculated that, is what does it mean to the taxpayer for oh, an each increase? One. Right. Right. Yeah, we'll have that information. Okay. The next one, the locate and map the uh, drainage manholes and catch basins for 20000 We're going to pay for that out of water enterprise reserves. Chapter 90 program, this is for streets and roads, $350,000. We get, we get that money from the state and we appropriate that uh, based upon our annual town meeting vote. So that will keep our roads and bridges in good shape. Gable End Repair Highway Garage, we're going to split this three ways, 750, 7,000, I might have that those numbers wrong. Yes, so I split the, that note that between sewer, water, and general fund for 5,000 each in order to get to the 15,000, that's why you see 10,000 here in the uh, highway garage repair. So, highway garage. I don't understand that. We're so I need to make a correction where it says 7,500. 7,500. 7, it should be 5,000 each. 5,000 each. And then there should be another 5,000 under the uh, uh, old article. Under an old article? Yeah. Okay. Or operating budget. Okay. Highway garage designed for $50,000. This is something that um, I think you all took a uh, tour of the highway garage, found to be in need of uh, major, major work. This would be a feasibility study. Uh, we deferred that to the annual town meeting to give the new DPW director an opportunity to, to review this. So that doesn't show up in this Sewer line assessment for $30,000, that's here on page 5, take the sewer reserves, and the follow-up sewer lighting and repairs for $100,000, we'll be deferring that to the annual time meeting, uh, we'll take that out of sewer impact fees, right now that account does not have that kind of money. So you're not going to do the 100000 Well, I think we ought to do the assessment first and then find out where to spend the 100000 So I don't think we're losing anything by doing it in two steps. Okay. Hydrant valve replacement for 60000 That's within the operational budget. Cal Callahan uh, well fit filter replacement. We took care of that at the annual time meeting. 26000 Water tank and this access and clearing for 25000 That's on page 7 here. And the issue is, is that we have two water tanks, one on Mount Warner and the other one up on the, the, on the range. And vegetation grows in and you can't access it in an emergency, so we need to clear that away. Callahan well number one reconditioning. This is the first of a two-step process to recondition the Callahan wells. We'll do well number one this winter and then we'll do them well number two next winter. But basically we pump water out of the ground, 
the, the filters get all clogged with sand and soil and sediment. Um, and so we have to flush that out. It's a reconditioning process. Number one is showing some sand getting into the water, so we think one of the screens is broken. So it's something that we should be doing. School have cafeteria equipment upgrade. This is 55,400 borrowing debt exclusion. So that's the second of the two debt exclusions that we'll be doing. And then we live in the times that we live in, health and security upgrades at both schools for 98,000. Uh, we'll borrow that within the levy so that can get done, that work can get going right away. Conservation land preservation, there's no land preservation coming up, but we always say that 100,000 should be set aside from CPA funds for that purpose. Wait a minute, so? So there's no, there's no land preservation coming up, so it's not on the table in front of you as CPA mm -hmm. right now. But right. as a plan, we should think about CPA as a source of funding for land preservation. Well, they do, open space. Yep. They have the three buckets. They have yes. the historic open space and and the other market, whatever, and I forget. That's the, the housing. Uh, housing market. So why did, are you trying to create another bucket? Nope, I'm not funding that because we don't have anything in front of us. Right, but so there's not, so that's, that's, that's just a placeholder to make sure that we understand that land preservation is something that comes up yearly. Oh. This year it doesn't come up, so we're not funding that, that's not in here. Oh, okay. 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 Council on Aging Van for 80000 we're going to borrow within the levy. Hadley Media Relocation Expenses, we know that we're going to be tearing down the Brooker School at some point, we need to relocate Hadley Media. They've, they've asked for $15,000 out of their own reserves for that purpose. Public safety complex front entry and carpet replacement. We have that money set aside already in an article, so we don't have to ask town meeting for that. Public safety complex expand and repave parking lot, $90,000. We've asked to defer this to the annual town meeting, but we're going to lose the season anyways. The asphalt plants tend to close around Thanksgiving, so. By the time we got this project up and going, we wouldn't have the source of materials, so defer this to the annual time meeting. HVAC, attic venting and dampers for 35,000. I've got the 27,663 here and make out the rest of it up out of the 490 budget and call it $8,000 for that project. So that will bring you up to the 35. Where do you have, so you have the 7,900 out of the operating budget? Yeah, that can come out of 490. Oh, out of 490, we'll be talking about. Yeah. Okay. DBW garage gable lines for siding, $16,000 as a duplicate from the request up above, so we're not going to fund that. Pole barn door and lighting for eight grand. We have that money left over in an article. And then finally, the appraisal software and hardware. 16200 If we don't get this done, we're not going to be able to get bills in a year's time. So this is a critical issue. I actually think that's the, op the, the, the article. I thought the old article is 8000 9000 I have 9000 article. These are two different articles. Go, we're going to we're going to re, uh, redirect this other the eight thousand. Yeah. So. Oh, you brought it in instead. I did. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. Okay, I understand. Okay. So yeah. So his. Um, oh, that's why it's thirty. He brought it in. Yeah. yeah he that's brought why in the eight thousand from the old article, which we could not use for this purpose. Okay. And then the uh, that article that uh, for nine grand for So that was the um, motion bringing the eight thousand back into yep. back into okay. yeah. yeah, got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. 
So there we are. That's the capital plan. And that's what's uh, here in front of you. Bunch of cash, bunch of borrowing. I think that the one one thing that we discussed, and, and it, just so you know what it is, is the town hall vehicle. That's the um, building inspector's car. It's out there, and I think that there's been a, some discussion, and, and he's looking to see. I think he may not end up using it if he doesn't find. You know, he's just looking. Maybe there might be a second, and if there's something that comes up and he finds it, he wants to be able to use it. But good chance that if he doesn't, that will go back. Correct, and then we'll be looking at maybe a real car in next year um, doing more. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. For the spring. For the spring. One of the accomplishments here is that we're finally getting ahead of the, or catching up to the needs of the police department. Uh, when Chiefs and Shanley took over from Dennis Huckowitz, the fleet was in really, really tough shape. And we were on a cycle of having to ca A, catch up, and B, get into a cycle of buy one cruiser one year, two cruisers another year, one cruiser, two cruisers. We're now at a place where we can just buy one cruiser each year and level up. So that's one of the major accomplishments of the capital plan this year. So Article 7, turn it over to page 6, is broken into a bunch of motions. That's the first motion, 7A, for all the cash funding. Motion 7B, the staff cost of 10,000. C, 47,000 for the cruiser. D, 31,000 for the uh, skid unit. E, for the dump truck. F, for the school equipment. G, for the school security. And then finally, F, H, for the van. So when we get to the capital article on the coming in floor, we're just going to slow down and we're just going to go through these and we'll vote as much of bundle, much that we can bundle as possible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that exclusion has got to be done separately. Hmm. So the language is technical. I forgot to show this to Bond Council, so I'll do that tomorrow. Morning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't have any questions. You want us to take a vote on uh, the um, What you have listed here for the capital plan for the yes please on mm -hmm. article seven we have a motion to approve article seven as presented so moved second second <laughs> all in favor aye. Aye. aye okay so the last one is number 12 article 12. Mm -hmm. starting on page 11. Okay, so this is still a work of progress, so you may want to defer your vote until the select board have had a chance to, to have their debate about this issue. But in general, we have been plowing sidewalks in the town of Cadley for snow and ice. I'm doing it for years. The Mass Department of Transportation has been building sidewalks, particularly from South Maple Street to the Amherst Line. Their policy is we build it, but we do not maintain them in any way. So they 
to leave these things to the towns to plow. All right, so it's an unfunded liability. We have to take our equipment, our people, our materials, and plow sidewalks that we did not ask for and did not own. So the select board are now considering maybe we should Hadley is unusual in that we do plow our own sidewalks. Many towns around here require the homeowners and the business owners to plow their own sidewalk in front of them. I live in the town of Greenfield and within 24 hours I have to shovel off my sidewalk and the drain and the fire hydrant, which I'm happy to do. But Hadley, I could just watch the people plow my sidewalk for me. The select board are considering putting together an article that would change the bylaw to give it more, the existing bylaw, to give it more uh, enforcement power and, uh, and save the town wear and tear on its equipment, people use of materials and expense, associated expenses by having the commercial uh, landowners take care of the, um, the property, of the sidewalk rather. Um, and they're having a robust debate at this point. Okay, One of the things that they're concerned about is the elderly, uh, the people who have a lot of obligations to their family, uh, may not have the resources. They don't want to have them shoveling the sidewalks. Where are the, all the sidewalks? Because we don't have uh, a lot. Most of the streets don't. So it's Route 9. Route 9 for, until you get to the town hall. So from town hall all the way down, down to Amherst, right? Right. Oh. So they're building from South Maple Street down to the Amherst line right now. Yeah. Uh, they built from the Coolidge Bridge to town hall. Yeah. We have Middle Street. We have West Street. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Those are the big ones. So uh, you said they have the commercial owners. What about the residential owners? Well, they're debating that. I mean, they they don't right now. The debate is leading towards we want to have the commercial owners take care of the sidewalks and have the town take care of the residential. Uh, properties. The problem is, is that we have such a mosaic right. of residential and commercial all along Route 9 that they've asked me to re redo this article to come up with a way of, of, um, of um, protecting the homeowners but uh, having the commercial property owners take care of the sidewalks. Could you grandfather in or um, a certain ones built? prior to a certain time, or do a certain distance within the center of town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things I'm playing around with. I looked at the zoning districts, and that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, I looked at possibly putting in geographical limitations in here, so, so the new sidewalk that's being constructed would be specifically included and everybody else would be exempted so that's that's probably what i'm going to present on wednesday i've not finished with that piece of work yet so if you wanted to refer your recommendation until you've seen the final copy you wouldn't be very much okay and, and what we use how much do we have any idea how much we how much it costs us to do the sidewalks that we have now well, every storm is different, as any DPW director will tell you, some of the more icy, more wet, more snow, more hard snow, more fluffy snow, more drifting. Uh, I figure every, every, every storm costs us $25,000 in general. For, really? Not just for the sidewalk. Oh, for the general. streets, yeah. yeah. So if you look at your snow and ice budget and you divide that by the eight storms that we normally have, it comes out to about 25,000. So some portion of 25,000. And the issue really is that they're adding more and more. Yes, they're adding miles of it. Yeah. That seems to make the most sense to say the new ones are not included. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
And yes, I have talked to Mass DOT and told them that it was an unfunded liability. They sort of said, yeah, it is. <laughs> they were impressed. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't change their minds. They said, oh, you noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that takes us through the warrant. Done all the other work already. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a lot. Of, we're happy to sit with you and walk through any. Well, I'm getting the feeling that there's a lot of a very clear understanding of everything. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to come in. Sometime and just you will set up a time and go through what 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 I know is about the, the borrowing you. and how the manager works. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm happy to provide you with any resources that I can, any information that I can. Uh, this is a good place to start. The first 25 pages probably covers everything you need to know in terms of what we're trying to do as a town. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, oh, sir. Who's going to present a lot of these articles? That they're going to do the division of motions on work Wednesday. So, uh, be there or be signed up. <laughs> did, did you want to hose some in particular at this, this point? Yeah, if you, you want, want to, you want to call dibs on I something. don't want any. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we used to have, we had Tom Pitty here that liked to talk. Yes, he did. Yes. And he took, he took, volunteered for this stuff. That's right. Game I'm not, as well. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I have that over here. <laughs> will not be volunteered. Yeah. I will do what I have to do if I. <laughs> so that's. Okay. I'm sure Valerie will volunteer though. Well, I thought we got you on the board. I, I thought we could do all the. Like yeah, the top. Top. They I'm good at public speaking, but I have probably the least understanding of. The issue. Well, all you have to do is read. <laughs> all right, you have to be a volunteer. All right. So, so chances, chances are is that they're going to ask me to speak to Article 1. Perfect. I mean, that, that's probably the place that we, they would go to first. Thanks for volunteering, David. Uh, whatever I've got to do for the town of Hadley. You know me. And are you four or five members now? What does this make? Are you, is, Kathy the turf. Kathy Stallone, okay, four. So you still have an opening. Yeah. You should never miss an opportunity to. I asked. <laughs> I, I, yes, we do have an opening. And if someone is interested, please uh, let David know. He'll sign you up ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did ask a couple people. I've been talking, but I have not seen anyone that is so uh, inclined. All right. They said maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> I did ask somebody about Andy. I've asked a couple of people too. You're welcome. Yeah, so seriously, uh, anything you need. Uh, you, you want audits, you want actuarial reports, we got it all. Uh -oh. You know what might, be really, what might be really fun is to come in and talk to David about all the different kinds of accounts. Because that's what kind of, you know, I didn't really understand at the beginning why we always transfer on every, you know, it okay. might be good to have a, a rundown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably just to put aside a little time sometime just to come in and mm -hmm. see what we can do. I'm yeah. here to help. Okay, thanks. And next month I'll start working on the 2020 budget. <laughs> but I, but I promise I won't bother you for a while. <laughs> So right now, our next we don't have the next meeting we have is the tri board meeting. After that, well, just we don't have any other meetings set up except for the, you know, the public forum or the, um, you know, the the, the special <laughs> town meeting. So then we'll have to start looking at when would be a good time. And we sh it was good before how we had it was the first and the third Thursday because it was. You know, you always know when it's going to be. So if we can come up with something like that again, that would be helpful, I think. And it doesn't have to be Thursday. Yeah, that's for sure. I think for Val and I, Tuesday or Monday would be better. Yeah, or, or even Wednesday, because I usually, do you like to leave on Wednesday? Because I usually like to leave, I like on, to leave on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, we have a business so, in Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Travel on. So we can do Mondays and Tuesdays. Right? So I think the Tuesdays would be, see, Mondays would be difficult because sometimes is the capital planning 
is meetings on Mondays, CPA meetings on Mondays. Mm -hmm. So we might be a, a conflict because fair enough. But maybe Tuesdays would be good because I don't. What is there any other meetings on Tuesdays? Who meets on Tuesdays? First and third, so no. it, it's more of a video as opposed to a room. Yeah, board okay. of the planning board, conservation, municipal building committee they tend to meet on a Tuesday. But that does, you should not you should not not schedule something because of other committees that are. And how about your schedule? Because we like to have. I'm, I'm here all the time. So, you know, if the planning board meets on the first and the third, they're not in this room. No. Yeah. But, but maybe maybe we could it. think about meeting on the second and the fourth. Right. And if you put your name down on that calendar, then it's you walk out the room. <laughs> and how are Tuesdays looking for this room on the second and the fourth? Flip the page. Flip it up. Yeah. Okay. Or fourth. HHC. Oh, it's HHC. Okay. Fourth. That's good. Or well, the fifth. fifth. <laughs> Hadley Historic Commission on the twenty third. Okay. Mm. So do the ninth mm -hmm. and the thirtieth. You could. Yeah, you could. You could do that. That'd be Halloween. Thirty first. All right. Do you want to <coughs> uh, or schedule at least one, and and maybe we don't need to do too many. Uh, you know, two of them a month until we have start until the to budget have, comes in. So the budget comes in, or we have a project that we want to start to talk about. This ninth, I actually will be flying back at the time that meeting. Would happen, I think. On which day? I'm not sure of the time of my flight. On the ninth, October ninth. Oh, well, how about, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm at, on a state I'm board day. too, and I'm the delegate to the yearly convention of that state board's in Salt Lake City. Um, and that's on the ninth. So, so we you just looked, and the twenty third was taken, but the thirtieth was open. Mm -hmm. Then why do we do the thirtieth? Thirtieth? Yeah. So we'll do a six p.m. Uh, FinCom. Thanks, Linda. Okay. Very nice. There you go. On the thirtieth. So. And you didn't choose one earlier in the month because you've got right because you've yeah, got uh, right. Yeah. The forum. Okay. And so we don't need that. Yeah, so, so I'll post you for the third at six, the special town meeting on the 18th at six, and the 30th at six. Okay. Um, you want to? You, you and, and after that, you want to? Do you want to look for any more after that, or you want to just call it? You know, <coughs> at the time because you want to um, check out your schedule. We don't well, want to post and do it ahead of it. Yeah, our, our, our schedule hasn't solidified yet. Okay. In another okay. couple week, another week or two, we're going to know better. You know who's going to be where when. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. Will you post that for me, David? So I don't forget. Of course, I <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're so good to like that. You take care of it, so. <laughs> So I like to tell you when the meetings are. So David walked it up. I, like, oh. I, I, I think okay, we're gonna post a meeting, and I'm like, oh, that's I can't give enough notice. That's uh -oh. I can't do yeah. that anymore. No, that's, that's no, 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 no. It's rough. There should be an email. I'll take care of you. Just tell me what you want to talk about. Yeah. Well, sometimes you tell me what you want to talk about because what's happening? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll see. We'll see after. It's a team effort. It's a team. Yes, absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. So if we have nothing else, uh, I'd say the meeting is. A, um, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'll be bothering you with it. Okay.